If you mention pharmacology in any nursing class, any nursing school, any nursing setting, everybody's going to look at you as if you mentioned that Voldemort or that guy who must not be named, or you mentioned the name of one big masquerade that everybody fears. Now, pharmacology is no doubt one of the courses that nurses learn find to be very, very tasking, boring at times, and it gives them a lot of issues when it comes to remembering the name of the numerous drugs that you have to learn. In this video, I'm going to be discussing tips on how to study pharmacology better as a nursing student. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, hi. My name is Busari Moliayo. I am a registered nurse, I'm a registered midwife, I am a Nigerian, and currently I live in Scotland, United Kingdom. On this channel, I film content related to nursing and healthcare. So if you're interested in content like that, do click on the subscribe button to join the YouTube family and also on the bell icon so you don't miss out when I drop another amazing video. With that being said, let's start with point one. Point one that you need to understand, and it is basically everything this video is going to be based on, is that to remember the drugs, you have to come across them, talk about them as much as you can. If you run away from pharmacology, pharmacology is going to run away from you. The biggest challenge about pharmacology, especially the names of these drugs, their classes, and so many other things, is because it is not exactly English language. You cannot check up your English dictionary and look for the word lisinopril, or look for the word hoexidin, or look for the word uh, amylodipine, or look for the word cocodamol, or look for the word, I don't know, hydrocycobalamin or something like that. Like, you can't just look up the name of a drug in an English dictionary and find a meaning. So these are words that while growing up, we did not hear these words a lot. We are not familiar with them. And some of them don't actually have like a direct meaning that we can relate to. So it is tough to study words, concepts that are not written in a language that you are familiar with. This is the same reason why a lot of people find it difficult to study anatomy study physiology and a whole lot of science courses because the words that we're expected to read are not english neither are they our mother tongue so don't feel dumb don't feel stupid that you don't understand these drugs the best bet that you have or your easiest way to understand them is coming across them frequently so basically all i'm going to be talking about in this video is how to consistently come across these drugs how to consistently use them in your conversation so that you will know them and please understand that there are a lot of drugs in pharmacology and it is entirely impossible for one person to know all the drugs word for word class for class those for those no you have to start from somewhere and you have to start from the common ones because those are the ones that you're most likely going to come across in your exams during practice and on your regular day-to-day -day conversations with people that may want to ask you questions as a nursing student so that is the fourth point for today you have to get familiar with them talk about them and consistently come across them for you to understand them second tip now which are now all connected with first point earlier I mentioned and during your word posting don't just go to the ward take care of the patients and leave try to go through their medication records because when you are on a ward for example you are going to find out that a lot of patients are taking the same type of medication take for example if you're in an orthopedic unit you're going to be finding patients taking a lot of pain medications so that is why you will come across, let's say, ibuprofen on bed one, ibuprofen on bed two, ibuprofen on bed three. By the time you come across ibuprofen and you ask your matron or your child nurse or any of the nurses on duty, you ask them, sorry, what is ibuprofen meant for? They tell you it's a non steroidal anti inflammatory drug, it is a pain medication. You go to the next bed, you're seeing ibuprofen. You're going to the third bed, you're seeing ibuprofen. You're going to the fourth bed, maybe you don't see ibuprofen there. You go to the fifth bed, you don't see it. But when you get to the sixth bed, you're seeing ibuprofen. By the time you're going home that day, you will know what ibuprofen is. It's that simple. It's actually that simple. Say, for example, if you're on a cardiac unit, like you're on a cardiology ward, you would find yourself coming across drugs like aminodipine, um, nifedipine, or um, drugs like digoxin repeatedly. Do you get my So when you go for what person, those, that is when you come across a lot of these drugs. You're on a medical unit, you're coming across antibiotics consistently. Do you get my point? You're coming across... Bed one, you're seeing metronidazole and fluconazole. Fluconazole is an antifoga, by the way. You're coming across metronidazole. The next bed, you see metronidazole. Next drug, you're seeing amoxicillin. Next one, you're seeing next bed, you're also seeing amoxicillin. The next bed, you're seeing metronidazole again, which you have already seen twice. 
So by the time you go through the medication charts of the patients inside that medical unit, that day you would at least know methionidazole and amoxicillin. You will know what they are used for, the common dosage, and the class that they belong to. So your word posting is a very good time to actually learn about drugs because that you come across it repeatedly. For example, if you're in a labor room, you're going to be seeing drugs like oxytocin every now and then. You're going to be seeing drugs like oxytocin. Oh, you see oxytocin now, you ask what is it for? It's a new serotonin. After the labor, you see them using misoprostol for uh, probably to help the contraction and the whole bleeding to stop and all of that. You come across it for the first labor. You watch the second labor, you saw oxytocin and misoprostol being used. You come to first in the third day, you see the same oxytocin and misoprostol being used every labor. Like, by the time you come across this drug consistently, you, when you get home after that week, you will know what oxytocin and misoprostol is. So, do you get my point? Coming across this drug repeatedly by trying to go through the medication charts of the patients, all the patients, is really not that hard. Just go through them. You will see some drugs that are occurring repeatedly. Then you can ask what are these. That's where you have already known about four or five drugs within that posting. Even if you don't read about them again. When you get to the example, you remember, oh, I saw this drug and I saw it in orthopedic unit and this is what it is used for. It is that simple. The next thing I'm going to advise is when you're studying pharmacology, study it system by system. Wait, 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 let me explain. I know that medications are classified into like different classes and not by systems. But one method that I found very interesting to learn medications is learning them system by system. Okay, so instead of trying to learn drugs based on your class, if you learn it based on the system, you can take away some drugs. For example, you know you're reading cardiovascular system in anatomy and med search today. Try to look for drugs, drugs that are consistently reoccurring. Remember, reoccurring, consistently coming across them every now and then helps you to remember faster than just reading about the drugs. If you're reading conditions that fall under the cardiovascular system, you will see that some drugs will be repeated. It is going to be repeated. And like I said, once you keep coming across them repeatedly, you will learn them faster. So try to study the medication system by system. If it is not working for you, study them just class by class. Do you get my point? Another thing I'm going to say is if you want to study pharmacology faster, you want to understand it more, play with the names of the drugs. Play with the names of these drugs. If you have a friend that has a name that is similar to the probably the prefix or the suffix of a drug, you can nickname that person. I have people who are my classmates that their nicknames were literally name of drugs. Do you get my point? So if you have friends among yourself, yeah. Keep people nicknames if you have like a movie you're watching that has a name similar to the, the, the name of a drug probably sounds like it use that and give it a nickname like playing with the names is really going to help because whenever you see that friend you're going to remember that drug and you're going to know exactly what that drug is so if you come across it in the exam you're good if you come across it during practice you're good with it you know what is that because what comes to your memory is that your friend that person that thing you have nicknamed after that drug do you get my point? The last thing I'm going to mention is flashcards. I did not use flashcard as a nurse student, but I know a couple of people that actually use flashcards and it worked for them. So I cannot dispute the fact that flashcards actually work for studying pharmacology. And what these cards are all like a drug card, what they do is like you write different names of drugs down, then you create it into a small jotter or a small journal or a small book, and you keep going after them time after time. And over time, you understand this drug. It still goes back to point one. If you keep going over your flashcards, you keep going over your drug card, it means that you are still consistently coming across the name of these drugs. You're still consistently coming across the uses of this drug, the dosage, and indications, contraindications, and all of that. So, in, in a nutshell, consistently, you have to look for a way that you consistently have to talk about these drugs. You consistently have to remember them. If not, pharmacology is very volatile, and I'm not going to lie to you. If you leave it, it's going to leave you, all right? If you're looking for a place where you can take practice tests on all your nursing courses, especially pharmacology, I'll leave a link below down to my website where I have a lot of practice tests and I'll keep putting up more practice tests for you towards your exams and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!